Hi, Doug Silton and Tess Minnick, and we're here on behalf of the Silton Foundation to offer you this free class, this free workshop. Uh, Tess Minnick and I are going to show you a little combination and break it down for you. So if you have a dance partner to practice with, or if you just want to try this on the social floor, uh, good luck. Yeah, let's get started. We're going to start open position. We have a sugar push base. We're going to do a hand transition with a wrist wrap. We're going to go into what I call the car wash whip, into a rotation to closed, and then ending with an inside roll to open position, in which case you could do it again. You could do your sugar push, you could do your wrist wrap, you can do your car wash whip, you can do your turning down to closed, and you can do your inside roll to open. In which case, if you wanted to try it again, you're set to do that. So let's start with the sugar push. Leaders, the one thing I want to point out that you may not do is on my sugar push, I step in front on my three and four instead of what a majority of West Coasters do, which is step behind on the three. This increases compression between you and your partner. So try that twice with me. One-handed sugar pushes. A one-handed two in front three and four. One more time. A one-handed two in front. Nice, now do one more and stop on four. A one and a two, three and a four. From here, we've initiated the beginning of a post in our stretch. I'm gonna take my thumb and put it down, go wrist to wrist with my partner. As you're trying this, you do not wanna go wrist to hand, you wanna go wrist to wrist. So when I make a circle, it's very small and the arms don't actually really move much. So it rolls over the top and I slide and lock into a cross hand position while we do our triple step. One time all together, we go one and two in front and stretch to our wrist wrap. All right, from here we're gonna go into our car wash whip. The car wash is where our leaders, we're gonna step back on our one. On two, we're gonna hook our right foot behind. As I rotate and hug myself, which is important, self-care, <laughs> hug your left arm across your body, this naturally opens my right arm, and that is what causes Tessa's shoulder to close, so therefore she turns. As she travels, we roll back to back, and I'm touching my elbow to her back, and I trickle so I can catch her in closed position. Let's so get from this side, shall we? We go one, hook and hug. I'm feeding her arm. You can see this form onto my back. So as I rotate, we turn through. Notice Tess is not hitting me in the head, which I love. <laughs> yeah, so followers, this is a, two things you can think about. The first one actually is, I feel like anytime I get that signal to do that rotation, I'm an object in space, so I don't really stop turning until I have the signal to do so. So I'm gonna keep rotating. Sometimes this is what happens is we feel that rotation, we just kind of under-rotate and go side, Boy. which we can, you know, we can always fix, but it's always better just to, until I get that signal to stop turning, I'm gonna keep turning like an object in space. And the second thing is not to hit your partner with your arms. There's two options for that. I can either go out the car window, straight over Doug's arm, or your partner's arm if you're not dancing with Doug, or- I recommend it though. I recommend dancing with Doug. I also Doug. recommend dancing with Doug. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Or I can take this arm straight up and back over my partner. Make sure not to go out and up because that's where Doug is. That's right. Up and out. I highly recommend not hitting Doug in the face. Don't hit Doug in the yeah. face. Um, now, uh, a question that, that we get in workshops is, how do you know you to raise the arm? And the answer is actually pretty easy. This is called a key lead. If I were to take Tess's hand, and do that same rotation lead, but drop the height down, this slows down her rotation, so she knows it's a pass, so she doesn't actually have to raise her arm. So a low key means she's gonna pass by. The origin of this is the mini dip. Pull, down, we pass by each other, and we end up here, right? So as long as my arm and Tessa's arm remains at frame height, this means I will catch her in the closed position, and that's how she knows to raise the arm. Nice. Now from here, let's settle into the three, four of our whip. Leaders, you're gonna do a head turn to your right and you're gonna lead your regular whip of West Coast Swing onto our five. But here, I'm gonna take my left hand, the hand is not touching Tess's back, I'm gonna hug myself again. I reach for Tess's hand and I walk down the line, five, pivot, six. 
I bring my elbow down so I don't hit Tess Minnick in the face. <laughs> Triple step. And of course, Tess is the object in space, has continued moving, so now we have our stretch. Let's do that from the three, four, the whip on this side. So we have three, four. We turn five, reach for the hand. Travel six, seven, and eight. Any questions? Questions? I see what, no, never oh, mind. No, no, okay, never yeah, mind. yeah, just an, an itch. Okay, let's try this from the top, starting with our sugar push. One and a two, three and a four. Remember, in front of the leaders. Let's do that again, and I won't forget the wrist wrap. Three and four, five and six, one, hook and hug, three and four, walk, five, six, seven, and eight. I freaking love that. So now we have the inside roll. For the inside roll, we're gonna do something called leaders, the Jackie Chan. The Jackie Chan means you're gonna elbow someone in the face as you punch them in the balls. Boom, elbow face, punch balls. <laughs> now, what this means, we have equal and opposite tension in West Coast Swing. If I were to push Tess Minute, she pushes back. If I pull Tess Minute, she pulls back, and that's how we create tension. If I, from, I'm gonna move Tess over here. If I elevate my elbow and Tess doesn't do anything, the elbow will raise. But if I ask for pressure by elevating my tension up, she squeezes her bicep down, and you can't tell, but she, her lat is moving, yeah. So I raise elbow and she pushes down, boom. Now we have intensification. If I do that on beat number two, ta -da. <laughs> if I do that on beat two of an inside roll, one, two, that rotates her body. The more I rotate my shoulder, the farther she goes. Isn't that amazing? Oh, okay, test me. So if I were to do a small rotation, she'd end up right here. And if I rotate my right shoulder more, she'll go farther. Isn't that cool? Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so equal and opposite pressure to make this inside roll happen. Anything to add to the inside roll? Uh, not really. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do it all from the top. Sugar push, leader step in front on three, wrist wrap. A one and a two, three and a four, wrist five and six, one, hook and a hug, three and four, reach for the hand, five, turn six, seven and eight, one, Jackie Chan, three and four, and from this side, here we go, sugar, one, two, three and four, wrist wrap. We go one, hook and hug, three and four, Five, six, seven, and eight. One, Jackie Chan. Three and four, five, and six. So can I do add one? I'm going to add one thing. So uh, just to, to piggyback off of what Doug said about that Jackie Chan move. So let's just kind of get into that. Let me get there. Boom. Okay. So when I feel this lead happening, one, two. Not only am I squeezing my shoulder blade down. You can't really see it right now, but hopefully you saw it earlier. I'm squeezing my lat down. But I'm also doing what I would call boob separation. Boob separation! <laughs> now, you could just be breast separation because everybody has those. But what I'm thinking about is taking this side of my body and separating it from my shoulders so that I'm going opposite directions as opposed to taking everything in the same direction. This is so important. <laughs> so that's where I get that intensity of connection is right here. Boom. So I'm really trying to take this and separate it from my arm. Again, I'm not lifting my shoulder or doing anything else like that, but I have boom separation. And then I'm going to close the shoulder off when I feel that need to turn. I'm going to close it off and create a turn. And that's how you do it. It's like Tess Minnick. Separation. <laughs> nice. So you done. Again, Doug Silton. Tess Minnick. And we're here on behalf of the Silton Foundation. Uh, the Silton Foundation gives away more than $10,000 every year for dance education for dancers in financial need. You can be a newcomer to the dance. You can be a, a traveling professional. If you don't have money for continuing education, we want to help you out. If you want to go to different dance conventions, if you want to go to local dances, if you need gas money to get to a local class and have a local class paid for, that's what the Silton Foundation does. So please go online to www.thesiltonfoundation.org.org. We are a domestic nonprofit. So if you'd like another additional tax write-off and do good things for the dance community, we do accept donations as well. Again, www.thesiltonfoundation.org. Thank you for joining us.